at the final of the professional match sprints, where defending champion Claudio Gallinelli in blue meets the pumped-up East German Michael Hubner. This is a best-of-three series, and it's as much a staring contest as it is a bike race. Hubner has won the first heat, so if he wins this, he will go on to win the gold medal. So on the inside, Claudio Golinelli, the defending world champion, meeting for the first time in a sprint at any world championships, Michael Hubner, the East German, now a professional rider. And people often ask the question, why do the riders go so slow when this is, in fact, the fastest event in the world, the sprint? But it's only over the last 200 metres when the riders will crack 40 miles an hour. The moment, the riders will try now to play cat and mouse. The man who has lost the draw, which is Golinelli, has to lead for the first lap under the rules, and Hubner will want to keep him there as long as possible, because the advantage of surprise will always lie with the second man. Times don't count in this race. There's no comparison at all with other events on the track. It is simply the first man back. It is the best of three matches, so that all furnace can result from three meetings, and at the moment, Michael Hubner is one to the good. So, in fact, he is one away from a gold medal. Crowd remain hushed in the stadium. Golinelli stalks on the lower part of the track, knowing now that any attack will come above his right shoulder. He will continually look around to find out the location of Hubner. And in track sprinting, you can actually ride off the track. Both riders now riding on what they call the Cote d'Azur, the blue ribbon. Hubner laying off his man. As they come round for two laps to go, you can see the size of these two riders because weight training and development plays a much bigger part in a track cyclist makeup than it does for a summer road racing cyclist who is a long distance athlete. These riders are pure power men. Now as we come round towards the end of the first lap, Golinelli then has the right to try and manoeuvre Hubner in front of him. He must lead for that first lap till he crosses the start finish line but now he's moving his man up the track his objective once he's over that start finishing line will be to try and bring his bicycle to a complete halt he wants to maneuver Hubner in front of him where he can see him now he's over the white line Hubner will try with determined fashion not to come past Colinelli because the best surprise is from the back and he's actually feigned a move there to try and cause Golinelli to continue to roll Colinelli is now trying to stand on one of the most difficult parts of the track, entering the 42 degree banking. He's trying to log his bicycle up, he's failed completely, he's continued to roll on. Hubner has won that round, that psychological battle, he's kept his man in front from Italy, where he wants him, and they continue to roll around. So Hubner is known as one of the fastest sprinters in the world. He will have the utmost respect from Golinelli, the professional world champion defending his title. But over the years, Michael Hubner, who began in 1983 in Zurich with a bronze amateur world medal, he then graduated to silver in Italy in 85, then finally won the gold medal in Colorado Springs in 1986 as an amateur. This is his first chance to have a crack at a professional. And again, Golinelli tries to stop his bike dead on the track. Now, if your bike actually moves backwards, and the crowd are appreciating this, if your bike moves backwards, the gun will fire and the race will be completely restarted. You can only hold it still. And just look at Hubner behind him. Locked it perfectly in position. Remember, the object is that Golinelli wants Hubner in front and he almost did it there. He almost stood long enough to force Hubner in front. And now Hubner bouncing his back wheel to try and lock it. This takes tremendous pressure on the legs. Well, the world record for standing still on a bicycle is actually over three hours, but not at competitive level. And just look at this, Hubner kicking back and forth to try and lock that wheel, but the pressure on those huge thigh muscles is quite tremendous, and he wants to save some for the sprint, which is not very far away. So, 
Hubner has decided to take the lead. Golinelli has won the round of the battle of the standstills. He's now got his man exactly where he's wanted him for the last one and a half laps, and that's in front. He can see him now. So Hubner eases the muscles from that session of standing still, arrives high on the banking. 42 degrees is banking. He rides as high as he can because it now means that Golinelli must make his attack underneath him. So he constantly watches over his left shoulder. Now he looks down to his right, but dropping lower down the track as the bell rings for one lap to go. 333 meters to go. The clock will start over the last 200 meters. If Hubner wins this, the boy in grey, it will be a world championship gold medal. If Golanelli wins and he makes the break first, it will be forced to a deciding ride. Golanelli now gives every bit of energy he's got down the back straight, but look at the speed of the East German. Michael Hubner comes onto Golanelli's shoulder as they come off into the home straight. Now Golanelli winding it up for a big sprint finish and gets it. 65 kilometers an hour, that is 41 miles an hour over the last 200 meters. Let's take a look at it again in slow motion. The power of the East German, and this is the first time he's had a crack at winning a professional gold medal. And as he comes up to the finish, straightens the arm, throws the bicycle forward, and the gold medal is his. And Phil, after that show of upper body strength by Hubner, I think Gallinelli may be headed for the health club. Hubner gold, Gallinelli silver, and Pakes bronze. The second gold for Hubner in these championships. The East German on the medal stand today and perhaps starring in Rocky Six. Next, we'll be back. Pan, we're at the Green Dome. I have